Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch, and I'm here to talk about Drag Race Mexico. So thank you very much for all your love and support for the review last week. You know, I know nothing about the references of Mexico, but uh, I'm learning with you guys and I'm sharing what I learn. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to the people that sent me papers last week. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you very much to Teresa, to Andrea. Thank you to Helen. Thank you to Yvette. You guys are so cool. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you have my PayPal account down below. Thank you so, 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 so much. And I also want to say thank you to uh, this person on Twitter, Jisui Warrior, uh, because some Mexican people that send me references when they watch the episode. If you want to do that, if you are from Mexico and you know the references, and after watching the episode, you want to send me a little, you know, private message saying, oh, this was because of this, this was because of that. I would appreciate that a lot. So, I don't know, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Send me a message and I, I, I don't know if I'm going to talk specifically about everything because I have to edit whatever I think is more important to understand why they're making their choices. But I truly, truly appreciate that. So help me out. So the second episode was super cool. I liked it. I think it wasn't too difficult to understand if you didn't know any of the references because we're all kind of familiar with the theme with quinceañera. So we do have a similar tradition to quinceañera in Spain and it's called Puesta de Largo, but it's at 18 years old. And uh, right now it doesn't really exist and it's only ever been for really, really high, 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 high society. And it's done at 18. But in general, it's the same. It's like a, they introduce you into like the society as the young woman who can like basically be married um yeah it's it's a little bit like weird and cringy all these traditions but yeah i think we're like all familiar with a quinceañera party and the aesthetic like through media tv and movies like we all understand that okay so they come in and they're all talking about the very bad lip sync that they had in the last episode and there's like a big difference with drag race españa because in drag race españa when they have a bad lip sync we are not harsh with the queens that have a bad lip sync, but in Mexico, it's like you're a disgrace if you have a bad lip sync. So they're talking about that. And then Lolita Banana uh, has the video, you know, the introduction video thingy. And she looks so cool with all these red details. I am loving Lolita Banana so much. And she, she in the message, uh, Jesui Warrior told me that it's supposed to be like the song from a novela, from a TV, like soap opera from Mexico, from a telenovela. And that song was sung originally by Talia. And it's called Quinceañera, that soap opera. So that's what she was saying. So it was on theme with the quinceaños, but all the contestants thought they were going to do a telenovela theme. So Lolita comes in. She looks so amazing, so cool. I love her style. I love everything about her. And she like, she reads the girls a little bit. She's kind of angry after last week's lip sync. Uh, but I think that she's able to... Ex okay, so if you have a cat, you know there's like 15 minutes every day when they're absolutely crazy. So my cat chose to be crazy right now. Thank you very much. I love your synchronicity and yeah. I think Lolita is able to express how she feels and say, girls, you have to work more on this or on that, or this is important for us, or remember, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't feel harsh. And that's something that they used to be able to do in Drag Race España, but they're not anymore. But I like, I love how she says it because it does feel like a sister. It doesn't feel like she is above everyone else. Uh, I don't know. She's like assertive, honest, but not mean. So again, another like weird episode. I talked about this last week. So last week there was a super long mini challenge, which we didn't really understand if the outfits were important, if not, 
blah blah this week there's no mini challenge but again the maxi challenge is the runway well th this time they have to sew it's an unconventional material sewing challenge but you know there's no mini challenge the whole episode is just that one runway sometimes when they have this type of runway like in sewing challenge unconventional material sometimes i don't know it's part of a bowl but Drag Race Mexico is like squeezing every little thing. I don't know how I feel about all of that, you know? So they run to grab all the unconventional material about quinceañera that they can. And then we discover that they also have like tons and tons of fabric. Like even Pixie has like black vinyl. So yeah, cool, but it felt like very dangerous seeing all of them like running and grabbing stuff and just like throwing themselves to the ground. It felt like uh, security. It reminded me to the unconventional material sewing challenge in Drag Race España season two with like the paper, the metal, and you remember that one? Uh, yeah, a little bit hazardous. And then we have a super cool and super long uh, workroom walkthrough with Lolita and Valentina. I liked it. It was way too long, you know, it's almost half the episode, but I like that very much because Valentina I started to see Valentina as like a little bit less scripted. First episode, she felt like very, very scripted all the time. And here she was a little bit more natural. But Lolita, Lolita is becoming very quickly one of my favorite hosts from the whole Drag Race universe with Supreme from season one and season two. She's up there, you know, I really like how she explains how she, I don't know, She's like one of them, and I can appreciate that. So as in every sewing challenge, there is people that can sew and people that cannot sew, and there's people helping people. Um, we can see that Miss um, Vallarta is very, very confident, and she's helping everyone. Pixie is helping her daughter, Vermella, and Margaret Illa is also helping people. There's people that have like certain confidence and Henny's is very confident. My mom taught me how to sew, whatever. Um, there's people that have absolutely no clue. And we see there's like a little clique that they call themselves like the main stars. And it's like Regina, Christian, and Galavaro. Those are queens that have been in other TV shows like drag, like they call themselves the main stars, but none of them really know how to sew. So Margaret, who has also been on TV with them, uh, is helping them a little bit. Galavaro is this close of a mental breakdown. Like, can you see that my fingers are actually touching? That's how close she was of a mental breakdown. Um, yeah. And shout out to Regina. I don't know if you guys heard this, but she has one sentence in the episode that I heard and I said, girl, that is so smart, she says. Uh, us drag queens are paid to wait and to solve problems. And that is so true. Like being a drag artist is always like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and then wait, 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 wait. And it's like solving issues. Like I have this problem and you find like a solution to every problem, you know? I always say there's people that find a solution for every problem and there's people that find a problem for every solution. I like the first type of people. If you're the second type of people, don't work with me, don't mess with me. So on the runway, the guest judge this week is Rockstar. He's like a popular Mexican TikToker. He does like the usual like lip syncing video to a popular sound or a celebrity sound or you know, all those things. Let's go with the looks because that's the important part about this episode. First up is Serena Morena. She chose to get like all the balloons sewed up together and create like a big skirt, but then the top was horrible. Her hair was very quinceañera, I liked. Her makeup was her usual makeup. The top was very unflattering and very weird and the skirt was like short in the front. Me personally, how I would have saved this is I wouldn't have made that skirt short in the front. I know that it's difficult to work with balloons. She was probably using hot glue and the balloons can melt. So the air, it, it, it's a problem. They can pop easily. Like, I don't know how she was doing it, but I would have made like the whole brown silhouette in the front and in the back. 
the top she had like instead of a short top or something she had a top that was down to her hips and it didn't look good the chest thing it didn't look good at all you didn't need so much because you can put that skirt a little bit higher up your waist and then just use a basic like two triangles of this beautiful fabric just going up into like a halter top just two triangles just do the bare minimum you, you don't have to do more for this to look better you have to know how to edit yourself and that silhouette of that top made the whole thing look ugly and it's not fair because she could have solved this working a lot less than she works actually i believe if you think about i don't know like spice in drag race us in the last season she was able to solve a lot of these sewing challenges just knowing where to put the smallest amount of fabric and it worked well it's not about working more it's about knowing where to put and where not to put fabric galabaro was so worried but then she looked amazing this is a queen that didn't know how to sew whatsoever and she was you know this close to a mental breakdown but uh, she was able to solve it. The only like bad thing is that you could see the corset underneath, like the naked co corset, but um, it looked kind of okay. Everything else, it didn't have too much rhyme or reason. The color wasn't too quinceanera, but she knows how to edit herself and where to put fabric and where not to put fabric. And it just made sense. So good job, Gala. Matraca looked super, super cool. Uh, but I didn't understand the, like, she has, like, some gold, rose gold details, like, two big square pockets in the front of her skirt. I understand the chest part, like, uh, that's okay for me, but she had, like, random details in that color, which I didn't really understand. The length of the skirt I liked, but I think that she could have made it even more exaggerated, uh, maybe a little more like Dior new look 1950s skirt or I don't know I think she could have made that same skirt look a lot cooler and Madrak is known for this specifically they call her all the time hechicera like a wizard and that's the way that they talk about people that can make something amazing out of nothing and that's what Madrak is known for for her use of unconventional material I like feel like I'm getting to know all these things about Madraca that I didn't know, but they all like already make a lot of sense with my fantasy of who Madraca is because, you know, she's one of my favorites. I understand completely who she is. If Madraca was from Spain, I can tell you she would be from Paquita's family, from the drag family I'm closest with. She would be from Las Niñas. Absolutely 100%. Like, I know who she is. Lady Quero. Okay, this is another problem with like, it's not about doing more necessarily because the issue here, I love the skirt. I love even the very puffy sleeves that she used, but it is true that the top made no sense with that outfit. She didn't have to do much. Like we have now two examples of like a very impressive skirt, but the top makes the whole thing like unbalanced. And we're going to have a very good example afterwards with Margaret that has the same thing but solves this issue in a very smart way. So it's not about doing more. It's about creating some type of very simple shape here. Showing skin is perfectly fine. And you have to like break all the hugeness of the, of the sleeves and the skirt with something in the same fabric or a matching fabric. And it can be very simple. It can be just two small triangles of fabric, uh, but this didn't work 100% for me. I didn't like the hair, the high ponytail. I, that didn't feel too quinceañera for what I understand a quinceañera is. And, but I like that she decided to do like this thing about like, don't drink alcohol because you know, you guys like in the US you cannot drink alcohol until you're 21 here in Spain. You cannot drink alcohol till you're 18, but it's very normal for children. You cannot buy the alcohol, but you can drink it if someone buys it for you. And it's a lot more common than in the US because you don't get into a lot of trouble if you're like underage and drinking. So uh, I think that in Mexico is more similar to Spain in that, in that sense. So I like that she like took a moment to say, don't drink alcohol, you guys. You have like your whole life in front of you that you don't need this to have fun. 
have a personality. At her knees, uh, she was super cute. She comes out of her, like, she has the big 15 and she does this entrance and I find that that is something like typical from quinceañeras, from any birthday actually, but you know, with the huge balloons and then you do your entrance and then she like dances. They dance a waltz in the quinceañera. Well, sometimes it's not even a waltz. Sometimes it's like a Katy Perry song or whatever, but it's supposed to be a waltz. And so she comes in like doing the quinceañera thing. Again, I'm not a big fan of the hair. She did put a little crown in the high ponytail, which I appreciate, but I'm not the biggest fan of the high ponytail for a quinceañera look. The dress looked super, super cute. It looked quinceañera, like super corny, excessive, cute, princessy. But um, she got a lot of praise for the thing that she did with the like plastic cups. And I did not understand and why sometimes some peoples in drag race mexico are getting praised for things that i'm like like what what i did not like too much the details with the cups first of all if you're going to use the cups i understand that you're cutting off the bottom of the cup so it's just like a rectangle of a like cute color but why don't you cut also like the white rim of the cup so it doesn't look like a cup because all of those cups still look like cups um, I don't really like what she did because it was like too big, bulky. I I understand it was well done and I understand that they don't have like a lot of time, but I don't understand how much praise she got. Then Vallarta comes out, Miss Vallarta, oh my god. So I love the fact that she's always one color, like her whole skin, the dress and everything. That is her thing and I think it's super interesting and there's not a lot of people doing that, but this skin color has nothing to do with the dress color. She was so excited because she knew who had to sew, you know what I mean? And then it's like, mm, it was a little bit too much and everything. Okay, so let me be honest. I think that the hair was terrible. It was not appropriate for a quinceañera. She like at least brush that thing, I don't know. And the color didn't, the like, colors didn't match, but we're asking her to match the colors because she's the only one that does the mono color thing. Uh, no one else we're asking to match. But the fact is, I understand the problems with the dress. I do think that if this dress was worn by a very, very skinny person, it, they, it, they would have got a lot of praise. The fact is that when you're a bigger person and you put volumes and things like this, like a lot of material, people hate on you a lot. And when a skinny girl wears it, it looks so fashion, so couture. That's what I really think. I don't think that the dress was horrible. I think that it was, if it was a skinny person, she would have slayed. But okay, but it's true that the colors didn't match, that her face was like pink, orange, like rose gold, and her skin was white, like a cool tone, purple, pink, grayish. But I just had to say the thing about the skinny girls, you know? Pixie with this quinceañera version, but all in black. You know, that's her style, the house of black and white. I think it's cool, but it, a lot of the details get lost because she decided to add behind the skirt like a little cape or something. And you can really see the legs then because there was no contrast. So some of these details, she had some like silver details here and like purple details here, but I would have liked some way to be able to see the details more. Maybe in person it looked a lot better, but uh, in on camera, some of the things got lost. Vermella, her makeup was amazing and she tried to solve, I think she's kind of smart. She made like props and she had the table with like, like a couple cups and a couple things and because you know, the quinceañera sits on the table, but she was like covering her whole outfit. I think that if she's going to use this prop, which I think is super cute, she could have, like, my friend Parody said that she could have made the dress as a table, like we've seen, I don't know, Victoria Scone do, or, like, a couple people have done that. Or 
if you're going to use that prop, use it in a funny way, not in a cover some way. Not it looks like you're trying to cover something. So not like that, but um, the dress it didn't look super finished, but it wasn't that bad. If you weren't trying to hide it so bad, if maybe you use the table and lean a little bit more on the humor and the campiness, and you can like pretend that you're standing on that table like this or you're falling asleep I don't know how to do it like sew it to the garment in a way that it's sticking out straight so you can just be like there or doing stuff or just camp it out a little bit then Christian Christian is another one of my favorites but okay this look it was supposed to be on the top uh, I love Christian one of my favorites I love him but what is this? Like, he kept saying that he was supposed to give, like, Regina George, young, 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 mean girl, I'm popular, I'm a cheerleader. Girl, you're giving Mariah Carey that doesn't accept her age and keeps dressing as a teenager. That's what you're giving. I don't under, I don't think this was horrible, but this was not top worthy, you guys. It was not. It's okay if it's a short dress. Quinceañeras are not usually like short, short, short dresses. But the pink flower thingy in the middle of the chest did absolutely nothing for her. The details in the chest, like it, it, it had these very, very weird shapes that I did not appreciate. Yes, she had like a nice silhouette because she covered a corset. But other than that, this look, girl, the top, girl. Regina Boche, uh, what is this? Like, I, I get what she was going for. I love the hair with it. It was very 80s, it was very cool. But if you're going to do these shoulders up to here, I need you to show skin anywhere else because if not, it looks like you're drowning on your own dress. And then the sil silhouette becomes like hourglass, but stupid because it's like super long torso and super long skirt thingy um yeah i thought it was like kind of funny and campy and she sold it pretty pretty okay but she was like drowning in her own dress it was like yeah i'm here margaretilla absolute complete 100 percent winner of this challenge i don't care what the judges say i you know i'm not interested in reality i'm only interested in my French vanilla fantasy in my mind, and Margarete Ya won this challenge. This is how you construct in one day with unconventional material a look. She did the beautiful skirt, but then in the chest, in instead of doing a stupid top like Serena did or like Lady Ghetto did, uh, she did like this heart symbol, super cute with all the unconventional material. And then she brought like the last doll because in the quinceañera, of course, you know, it's like you're becoming a woman now. So they they have the tradition of the last doll in the quinceañera. And she brings that that no one thought of. And she just looks amazing in her style. And it all made sense. And the hair was cool. The makeup was cool. 10 out of 10 for Margaret. It makes no sense that she didn't win this week. In my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion. So as you know, in the top we have Argenis. Uh, Margaret Villa and Christian and in the bottom we have Miss Vallarta, Vermelia Noir, both of them were in the bottom last week and Serena Morena. They say Vermelia and they live in the bottom, Serena Morena. Do you guys agree? I don't know if I agree. I'm not sure uh, but okay I understand kind of. The lip sync they didn't give the song wasn't a song that offered a lot uh, for a lip sync, so I think they did okay. Like, they tried. You can see the intention. You can see the intention of the slavement, but the slavement wasn't delivered. So, yeah, they tried to kind of, tried to kind of slay. The winner is Argenis with the cup purple thing. I don't agree. And going home is Miss Vallarta. And I don't know if I agree with that. May yeah, I understand that she wasn't the best in that lip sync, but I don't know. I, what, as I was saying, if it was a, skin, a skinny person wearing this, I would have loved to know what the judges would have said. So my highlights from this episode are going to be 
uh, I think just exclusively Lolita Banana and how much I love her. I just, I'm obsessed with Lolita. I love her, I love her, I love her. I love that Valentina is getting like a little in the groove a little bit and that I don't understand the judges' decisions, but well, I'm used to that, you know? I'm from Spain. So if you are from Mexico and you get more references than I do, please don't be shy and send me an MD through like Twitter. I'll read it 100%. And uh, that way I can study specific things about the episode. So thank you very much if you do that. If you want to support my channel and be part of this like super cool family that we have here, you have my PayPal account down below. Thank you, thank you. And I think that's all for today. I love you guys. Stay queer. Stay queer. Stay queer.